like as if for 200,000 pounds you cannot abstain like come on like you is that how much self-control you do not have Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're good, hope you're well, hope you're safe. So, recently I just finished watching a reality TV show on Netflix called Too Hot To Handle. Some of you may have watched it because it was really popular, but for those of you who haven't, this is the premise of the show. They brought a bunch of sexy, single, crazy people together on a, a remote island and for the first day they didn't tell them anything so they were just going about their day forming relationships getting all frisky and whatnot and then they dropped the bomb that in order for them to win the £200,000 cash prize they had to abstain from all sexual contact no kissing no touching no sex even no masturbation. And this led to an interesting show where people were just falling into temptation left, right and centre. You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of conflict around, you know, you're losing me money, you're not playing by the rules, etc, etc. Now, there was also a lot of banter around this on Twitter and social media. People being like, as if you cannot abstain when there's money on the table. I'd be doing this for free. I have been doing this for free, etc and whilst I was also sort of bantering them in my head like as if for 200,000 pounds you cannot abstain like come on like you is that how much self-control you do not have but then I thought about it and actually are you okay Keith yeah. you okay uh, I just want to yeah yeah However, abstaining from temptation is not that easy, even when there is £200,000 up for grabs. And I'm going to tell you why, and in doing so, kind of link it to parallel life, everyday life, and explain how then to avoid that temptation if you are abstaining from sex, or anything really. So number one thing that would make it so hard for those people on that island to avoid that temptation was their lifestyle. Come on, the producers picked these people for a reason. At the beginning, the interviews that they were given, all of them were sexed up, all of them were party animals, all of them were promiscuous, all of them were not about that monogamous life, all of them were non, like, non-committal. All these types of factors obviously make it harder. Now, putting money in front of someone doesn't change their character. It doesn't change what they're used to doing on a daily, daily basis and, and the habits and the characteristics that they've built up. And so if we were to parallel this to our everyday lives, the obvious solution would be don't live that lifestyle. <laughs> like you might think you, you'd be able to go into certain places and live a certain lifestyle, but this one area that you're trying to abstain from, this one temptation you're trying to resist, you'll be okay with that. That's not how it works. If you're on a diet, you're not gonna go sit at McDonald's every day. If you're afraid of the dark and you're trying to avoid scary situations, you're not gonna watch scary films and go sit in a graveyard. It's just common sense. <laughs> Lifestyle. Second thing is they set the scene. They, this is not someone coming to your door, knocking on with a um, uh, briefcase full of 200,000 pounds and say, hey, don't have sex. Okay, cool. No, they went on an island, on a beach, with the sun, with alcohol, with vitamin D, with bikinis and bathing suits and short shorts and everything everywhere. So of course it's gonna make it harder for them to, um, to, to resist temptation. Staying in bed together, private rooms, bathtubs, hot tubs, jacuzzis, the lot. So we cannot be that naive to think that the setting and our surroundings don't affect how successful, well, how successful, how susceptible <laughs> we are to certain temptations. That is why if you are someone who's trying to abstain, should you go on home with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend? Hmm, should you spend the night? Hmm, should you have a romantic kind of light, you know, with nobody else in the house and you're gonna stay till 1am? Hmm, let's keep it real. There are a lot of things that make us feel sexier and freer and looser and just more up for a good time, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, avoid those things if you are trying to abstain from certain things. Thirdly, this show was an excellent example of immediate gratification versus long-term reward. Think about it, they put them on an island today. They put them around other attractive people today. They put them in um, beds together, in private rooms together. They're making it very intimate and cozy versus, oh, you could win £200,000, but you'll know, you don't even know how you're going to win it. You don't even know if you personally are going to win it. You don't even know how much of the cut you're going to get and it's over there and you haven't seen the money and it's blah, blah, blah. 
you get it? Yes, we are looking at it, watching it in a, what, how, well, in a couple of days, if you're like me, watching it in a couple of days, a few hours of a, of a show, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, 200,000 pounds and you cannot abstain. They are there in the moment on this island for what, four weeks with people that they're attracted to and the 200,000 pounds is like over there. Plus they're on a reality TV show. They're probably thinking I'm gonna be famous after this. They don't, they don't care. It's like when people go on Love Island, no one's thinking about 50,000 pounds. Everybody's thinking about love and fame. So essentially they have no real sustainable reason to go for the long-term gain versus the immediate gratification. I guess you could argue that Kels, the Nigerian guy, was kind of the only one that sort of grasped the right-ish concept because he appeared to be looking at it from a point of view of like, I don't want to fail, stop failing, versus everyone else who was like, oh no, I can't kiss this person, I can't do this, I can't do this. He always had a more important why, whatever that might be. I also did hear that he gave half of his winning money to his mum, so maybe if that was on his mind the whole time, that makes his why, his reason for, for staying on course a bit more sustainable than other people who are just like, oh no, I just want to kiss this person. He knew his why and we also need to know our why and we, our why needs to be sustainable enough to keep us on path. And for me and for other Christians, our why is Christ. So in conclusion, this show touched on some important practices. You could call them, yeah, they were biblical practices because these are all pockets of things that the Bible and the Word of God tells us to do generally. However, for me, ultimately, trying to do all these sorts of self-improvement things as good as they may be without Christ, for me, it's either unsustainable, might as well forget it, I'm gonna fail, or they're kind of just done in vain and it's like, oh yeah, nice, we have a bit of a better relationship, but ultimately, miss the mark slightly. So that's my take on the show. Ultimately, all roads need to lead to Christ. All the things that we try to do need to come from a place of strength in Christ and not in ourselves. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> Let me know what you think. If you did watch the show, what do you think of it? What do you take from it? If you didn't watch the show, you probably didn't miss much. <laughs> Let me know what you think about my thoughts on this whole topic of temptation and just staying the path and all that, etc, etc. Is there anything that for £200,000 you would abstain from? Would I give up popcorn for the rest of my life for £200,000? No, I would not. <laughs> As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hit that like button so I know well, Hit that like button so yeah, I know that you like this video and you like more of these sorts of videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Comment below, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.